Your company decides to undergo SOC 2 and stand out in a competitive SaaS crowd as a security committed company. But employees are now overwhelmed by manual admin workloads of preparation being disrupted for hundreds of hours. Delays in sales and growth are now a reality. Imagine a solution that makes getting SOC 2 ready fast, simple, and smart. Cytel AI is the answer to make all your SOC 2 workflows centralized and simplified in one place. Focus on your core business while we automate your evidence collection and monitor your controls 24-7. When non-compliance happens, you are informed instantly. Your own policy center, security awareness training, assets mapping, and audit management. You may be thinking how great this sounds. However, you still need support to navigate through the process. At Cytel AI, the road is never alone. Our compliance experts will walk with you right to the finish line. We work how you work. It's a tailored compliance partnership. Once you hit start, we integrate your tech stack, add your team, perform a gap analysis, and complete all action items necessary for you to gain ultimate SOC 2 readiness to pass your audit successfully. Book a free consultation and see how you can count on Cytel AI as your trusted compliance partner. Thanks for tuning in to the Future of SaaS Festival. We really hope you're enjoying the event so far. All sessions are designed so that you can interact with each other. So make sure to join in on the discussion and have your questions answered by our brilliant speakers. For all things SaaS related, don't forget to check out the Future of SaaS memberships. Simply head on over to our website to get started. Now sit back and enjoy the next session. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Future of SaaS Festival. So today we've got an absolutely fantastic guest speaker uh, joining us today. So it's Mayran Gallis, who's actually the CEO and co-founder of Cytel. And he's going to be discussing how to build trust and boost sales through smart security compliance. Before we get started though, I'd like to invite everyone tuning in today to drop and say hi, let us know where you're from in the chat box. And also, Mayran will be answering your questions at the end of the session. So without further ado, I hand you over to our guest speaker today, Mayran Gallis. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you for having me. And I'm happy to be over here. So nice to meet you all, guys. Um, and let's make fun in the next um, 30 minutes. So um, about security and compliance for SaaS, uh, this session is going to uh, mainly be about how to build trust, boot sales for smart security compliance for startups, for SaaS companies, uh, which they have cloud-based platform, they build in uh, the product, maybe they're already selling the product, maybe it's around the C, around A, or maybe around B, and then they um, understand that they need to go for security compliance. Stuff like SOC 2, ISO 27001, GDPR, um, CCPA, CMMC, and basically it's endless. So the session today is going to be about this one. I will be discussing about the best practice, about trends, about what we're going to see in the upcoming future. Um, so my first question, does compliance equal security? And that's a, a, a very interesting question for those of you that already been going through compliance um, not necessarily you will think instantly that the answer is yes. Um, so it's very depend. There are multiple frameworks out there uh, for security, multiple frameworks for controls, and actually it's require a, a combination of work. And we're going to see uh, during the presentation what you're going uh, um, to see uh, while from the beginning of the presentation compared to the end of the presentation. So keep this question in your mind and we'll see this um, uh, down the road. Now, for those of you that already have been going through compliance or for security audits, maybe this picture will make some sense. Uh, everybody knows that we are pretty occupied during the year, and then we gonna get for an audit meeting. It's gonna be a series of meeting, and actually what most of the company are doing, or some majority of the company are doing, is that they are not operating effectively as monitoring their internal controls while they're, but actually two, three months before the audit, 
they start working on stuff, collecting evidence, making sure that everything is all right. And after they pass in the audit, they, they will have another nine months of, of um, just relax in the aspect of, of the relevant security audit. So for us that, uh, that already been through compliance, you may know that it's very demanding. You need to, um, to honor stakeholders. You need to speak with a lot of people. Um, collection of evidence. This is literally hundreds of evidence. And then some external uh, auditor and um, by third party auditor came into the company and just asking you a lot of questions in which you need to prove them. You need to, uh, um, they work the best methodology uh, on trust but verify. And they will actually deep dive and see how the company is literally operating um, and literally equal actually. So they're gonna ask from you stuff and proof and you will need to show them. We don't want to get there. We want that the audit day will be just another day at work. We don't want it to be some uh, um, special project that all the company need to um, uh, uh, join forces and work strongly in, into and um, just achieving uh, the uh, successful result and passing the audits. So why do companies need compliance? First of all, this is a customer requirement, or in some cases, this is just a law requirement or regulation. And GDPR and, and GDPR, CCPA, based on the country and the region, you have multiple privacy regulation worldwide. And so you have a regulator and you can get a fine and you can actually uh, pay a lot of money if you are in having non-compliance. And uh, as of customer, many times, especially for startups, they try to sell the product, their champion actually love their product, but then when they move on the, the sales cycle, they will interface the security department or maybe the legal department or, or the financial department or, or the compliance department. And they will be required from you um, to supply some kind of security certification. So this is where you're gonna face the, um, the half truth of security compliance. Second is competitive advantage. If you have a solution and you have a competitor and they have more or less similar solution and you don't have any kind of security compliance, that means that they will go through the security compliance faster than you. And that's very good for them because then they get for the maybe procurement department and they're very close into closing the deal. So that's why you want to have this competitive advantage. Also, you want to build trust. You want your customer and prospect to be trusting you. You don't want security to fail the deal. So this is very important. And last but not least, it's security standard. It's actually gonna build a very robust security standard in the company. It's gonna put out of some uh, proper processes, procedures, organizational policies, implementation of security stuff like multi-factor authentication, code review as part of your software development lifecycle, proper risk assessment, and etc. So this is why it's so important, um, especially in a world after COVID-19 that many people working from home and from multiple countries, and we're gonna speak about that in a moment. So the main challenges in security and compliance is first of all, it's inefficiency, all right? You only need to do hundreds of things, literally hundreds of things manually, that would say creating some uh, uh, documentation like policies and pro procedures, and they work on the uh, risk assessment, role-based access control, review your sub-service organization, SOC 2 reports, and etc. So this is vast, and that's going to accumulate hundreds of hours from your time. Second, it may be inaccurate. First, you need to understand the scope. You will need to assess the scope and just make sure that you are in the, on the safe side. You don't miss anything from the scope. For example, if your infrastructure is based on Amazon uh, uh, um, Cloud Services, AWS, Amazon Web Services, um, and also let's say you have some data, uh, uh, customer data uh, retained on MongoDB by Atlas. If you may uh, forget Atlas uh, to be part of the scope, that means that the scope is not full, it's not complete. So that's a problem. Also, this is a one year event. This is not a continuous event. The auditor will come and pass the company one year over a period of time. It might be if we're discussing about, if we're speaking about SOC 2, so the auditor will check the effectiveness of controls over a period of time, and yet they will be, uh, um, their methodology will be based on populations and samples. 
these are not uh, very accurate. That's the best they could uh, uh, they could do at the following at the past few years. But that's about to change, in my opinion. And Fred, it's complex, especially if you're not the chief information security officer. If you are not the GRC manager and the governance risk and compliance manager, maybe you can be a CTO, an engineer, VP R&D, um, operation manager. It doesn't really matter. Your, your, your main job responsibilities is not security and is not compliance. It's just another thing that you got to do and you need to pass it successfully on time with successful results because you want to, do, to win this deal. And it's complex. That's required. That's going to require some level of knowledge, some ne- level of information and experience performing audits before. You want to know where you are, uh, uh, when you are getting. So that's mean lots of reading and preparation before of it. Now, key compliance pain points. Um, let's separate this between startups and corporates because each one have their own pains. For startups, lots of time, many like time invested in their own places. Instead, the fact instead that the engineers will be spending or investing in time over engineering, architecture, code review, maybe fixing bugs, they will need to invest a lot of time or maybe waste their time over compliance. Second, it's lack of knowledge and experience. These are people that are not trained and didn't go through any education over compliance. That means that they have lack of knowledge. Now, they can study, they can learn but it's gonna take time and they may suffer from non-compliance and bad results. And startup, especially, you don't want to get there. Third, increased cost and bad results. That's very painful. You, you end up paying more over labor hours, over some additional tools, consulting, and, and stuff that you didn't understand the total cost of compliance in the beginning. And that just caused you losing more money um, that you initially planned. Uh, as of corporates, and uh, when we speak in corporates, let's just assume more than 1,000 employees. And um, so they have different challenges. One of them is on the stakeholders. It can be 20, 30 stakeholders. It really depends on the company. I worked, and I was auditing a company as my previous work at EY. Um, and they had approximately 20 products, uh, 20 products, and um, 34 um, development teams and multiple um, tools. They also acquire in a company and that was a mess. So honestly, all the relevant stakeholders might be some difficult. They need to understand that this is a top, a, a top bottom. It's come, in, it's come from management. You're going to have and you will need the management support for this. Second, multiple framework and product. Startup may only seek for SOC 2 type 2 or maybe only ISO 27001. As of uh, corporates, they will need to actually incorporate many kinds of frameworks, certifications, regulations, attestation reports, and etc. And managing everything, managing the version, managing the evidence collection, redundant of work, that's a lot of pain. Third, you're going to have numerous of people and applications. It's vast. It's high scale and it might be very challenging. So this is what you should look up for when you're preparing for compliance. Another question. Every, everybody know Amazon Web Services. Um, Will anyone know how many compliance programs does AWS comply with? It might be interesting question, right? Because this is, come on, it's AWS. AWS is vast, so let's just through rapidly, uh, walk through rapidly over AWS and certification, uh, attestation, regulation, and frameworks they are following. So you can see the global, uh, in the global certification, we can see ISO, a uh, different type of ISO, ISO 27001, uh, SOC 1, SOC 2, which this is an attestation report, and PCI DSS, Cloud Security Alliance, and etc. We're going to move on for Europe. In Europe, you're going to have some different stuff that's relevant for the European market. You can see in the UK, in Germany, in Netherlands, different places. Um, Americas, in the Americas, uh, also some other type in Canada, other type of certification and regulations, uh, Asia Pacific, you can see more stuff. And eventually, uh, I counted it myself, and it was 24 certifications and attestation, plus another 15 frameworks and, and alignments that they were in compliance 
another five laws and a regulation and 30 privacy regulation. It ends up for 74 um, total compliance that AWS need to follow every single year. All right, so this is, this is robust, this is vast, but still it's AWS. So if you're taking this on a scale of a startup, 10 employees, five employees, 50, 100, maybe 1,000. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit different, but still you need to brace yourself because external audit is coming. And it's gonna be maybe only one, maybe more than one. So you will need to prepare your company. Now, um, the most common frameworks that we identified, first of all, is SOC2 and ISO 27001, which I'm gonna speak about them very soon. You can also find the HIPAA and iTrust for the healthcare industry, the PCI DSS for the credit card and payment uh, processing, uh, CCRA, uh, CCPA, and GDPR, which are the privacy regulations for um, Europe and the United States, and the CMMC, which is very relevant for, um, for the United States and basically discussing about the, um, the cyber, sec cyber security maturity model certification. So it's vast, there are many more, but let's just focus right now what's relevant for startups. In regard for security and compliance, it's gonna be SAC2 and ISO 27001. Now, what's the main difference between the two? Because that's a, a totally different approach. First, SOC2 so look backwards. ISO 27001 look forward for continuous improvement. Now, while, while it's looking backwards, it's actually be based, SOC2 is based on accounting audits. It's evolved from accounting audits. So they have a trust but verified principle. They're gonna ask from you hundreds of pieces of evidence in order to prove, uh, uh, prove the control. It's very relevant for the United States because it's based on the American Institute for Certified Public Accountants. So that means if you have some business activity in the United States, most likely it's not a question of if, but a question of when you will need to follow the SOC too. Um, it's going to take six to 12 months and require approximately for a small startup and two to 300 hours a year. Um, now, while the ISO 27001 look forward for continuous improvement, it's based on the International Organization for Standardization and based on the ISMS, Information Security Management System, both of them are global, and one is certification. The SOC 2 is an attestation report. Um, it's going to take less time, in my opinion, especially for, for startup. It's very much based on policies and procedure, but you should take both of them in consideration while assessing your business objective and business strategy. Where, when, for me, which market would you want to penetrate in the, in the next year? So that's going to be very relevant. And... And while doing so, you will need to understand that's going to be a very picky work. Like you will need to do many managing lots of Excel with many uh, a Google Sheet and words and email. And you will need to find an auditor for every certification or attestation. It's going to be a different auditor. So it's very uh, uh, crucial from whom you choose and how you're going to walk through the process. Um, now, you want to bring someone with experience or maybe find a trusted partner that can take you through the process. That's how it's gonna look like. When I was doing audits, that's how it looked like. I was literally collecting lots of evidence. I had a testing procedure, and for each one, I had the testing result. Now, I had companies receive deviations and also negative auditor's opinion. This is too bad, but in some cases, it's happened. Um, so you don't want to get there, you want to work effective. And in order to work effective, I will share a few tips uh, in a few minutes. Regarding the trends in compliance, so at 2022, we see the remote work is just increasing um, more and more. People working from home, even if it's not full-time, it's part-time, it's 60%, 40% people working remotely. Um, now, it's not necessarily have to be only from the same states. We can find people from... In the United States, working in the United Kingdom, people from the United, from the UK, working in Thailand, or working in Japan, or working in Israel, or uh, you name it. So we live in a bolded world, and we need to accept it. How do you manage your IT fleet? How do you gonna send computers? You don't have the physical uh, access anymore and the clean desk anymore. What you gonna do then? So that's interesting because it's changing, literally changing the world. Um, and I, after that, also sharing compliance culture with stakeholders, board, management, customers, business partner. Um, many people will want to understand 
what is your compliance posture? They want to trust you. They're looking for reason to trust you. So you should be better give, the, uh, give them those reasons. Um, also, you're going to see lots of cloud adoption, mainly for uh, enterprises, not only for startup, in which we can already see this today in the public and uh, hybrid cloud. We can also see huge corporates, also governments, actually migrating to the cloud. And outsourcing compliance, because today it's very difficult to find people that actually have experience and knowledge regarding information security within the information security for governance risk and compliance and in this domain to be specialized in specific frameworks so uh, out talking compliance just makes sense because it's very difficult to find uh, um, uh, good uh, uh, employees um, and that people that actually can give you and take you wherever you want to go so this is what makes sense outsourcing compliance save money and move fast and uh, multi-security frameworks we see every year it's going to just increase. You will need to have more and more security certification, attestation, and, and comply with privacy regulation, and etc. Eventually, we see also emerging technologies, which we need to understand how we're going to audit them. Um, so uh, like the AI engine that can get a, a, a autonomous decision, and the blockchain technology, which is very interesting, auditing blockchain and auditing through blockchain, so we're going to see big shifts in this area. Also, all the autonomous vehicles that we've seen, what's going to happen with their operating system? Because we're speaking about life, about a, a life of people. So it's extreme, extremely important to make sure that we don't take any risk when it comes to life of people. Um, another trend is that we're going to see shift from the traditional certification into the continuous certification. I brought this one from the Cloud Security Alliance, and this is not a, a, a thing of the future, but this is actually start happening right now. There is a, um, a people and entities like the Cloud Security Alliance and Continuous Audit uh, Work Group developing a, a framework and, and guidelines into how you can audit continuously your, your environment, creating a machine language, understanding that, and transforming transforming that, that traditional audit to be from a yearly basis, to be on a monthly basis, hourly basis, and, min, and then maybe a minute basis. Every minute, an automated system will be examining your environment. So how should you approach security and compliance? That's a great question. Um, now, Benjamin Franklin said, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. In other words, Plan carefully, work on the planning. You don't just want to go out there and, and make mistake and waste time and money. Um, so the pre for preparing for an audit, you will need to work on scoping and planning. And work uh, carefully on that. Bring someone that you trust. It can be a friend, it can be some specialized trusted partner, anyone that you can trust. Speak with the guy, explore his understanding and knowledge regarding security compliance. Ask about his experience. See how many successful projects he had so far. Next, find a business or define the business objective and timeline. Uh, identify the stakeholder. Um, identify which relevant technology solution and technology uh, uh, tools and environment to use. What is the policies and procedure? You need to build them. You need to build stuff that actually correct for the company. Um, and must, this is a must to have a top-down approach. You must to get management buying. They need to understand the project. They need to support you. You will need the support. Eventually, board and management security review. Put the security as part of the board and management. This is part of the SEC, uh, SOX regulation. And it, we're going to see this not only as part of regulation. That's not should be the incentive for board and management discussing security. That should be just a monthly thing. They should understand what are the risks and what could happen if. So I think that's the main idea over here. Another, uh, uh, just an example uh, of uh, uh, architecture, like how you can transform the security compliance. And by connecting with multiple, hundred, like dozens of integrations, collecting evidence on a daily basis and identify uh, compliance issues in real time, you're going to increase your level of security compliance in 100% and decrease the number uh, uh, of hours that you will need to invest in compliance um, in a very, uh, very maybe in 80 to 90 percent. Also, regarding security and compliance module, everything is centralized. It's one place. You need to have a single source of truth. 
don't manage and do a redundant work and don't manage a version every year. Um, honest, all the stakeholders in the same place, and this is how you want to manage your security compliance. Um, why you should automate compliance? It's going to save your time. You're going to stay compliant. You're going to boost the customer trust, and it's going to make compliance easy. Not all of us are experts for security compliance. Some of us just want to understand what's the minimum required that I actually need to do in order to get this certification. I want to be certified. I have a deal, and I want to be certified. Why need to do? So this is another reason why you should automate your compliance and also find this expert. You don't need only the platform. You also need someone to speak to make sure that you are on the right track, to brainstorm, to ask this tough question. What should they do? I have a contractor, 80%. He's working with his own laptop. Should I deploy my agent? Should the sign NDA should be sufficient? What I should do? That's why you should have somebody that you trust. Now, uh, we almost done, it was very quick, but speaking about the future of compliance, actually the future is here. We already seen continuous monitoring, um, robotic process automation, um, agile audit management in the past, we actually used to, to uh, um, do a uh, transport and visit on site and do audits on site for five days, two weeks, it depends. Today, everything, not everything, but majority is still remotely advanced data visualization. You want to get some insights. What's going on? You don't want to lose your hands and foot. And, and, and advanced data analytics. You want to leverage technology, including artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, because you want to take all these repetitive audit tasks that you need to do on a continuous basis. You would like to put them, you want to put them uh, 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 to make them automated, and you want to invest your time on those strategic decisions that you will need to have. So this is why it's so important. Um, and we're gonna see more and more development uh, and that's actually already happening. So does compliance equal security? Um, absolutely, absolutely yes. If you take it seriously, don't use a mindset of, or mindset of checking the box. You need to see the value. If you don't see a value, don't do it. I'm serious. If you don't see a value in a control, if you don't understand what is the risk in a control and you think that you're just going to uh, um, check the box, maybe you shouldn't do it. Like, have a debate with your auditor. Try to understand. Have a debate internally. And that's what you should do and continuously pushing this forward. Now, thank you very much, everyone. Regarding if you would like to learn more, we just, uh, we just uh, went out with our new SOC2 Academy. It's the first SOC2 Academy in the world. You're going to get you can get and be certified for SOC 2 um, Master Implementer. It's for free. We just want to all startups like ourselves. Um, you can learn stuff and do it yourself. And I wish you all good luck. And hopefully you will get this security certification and scale fast and close those deals. So thank you very much. And um, Alex, it was a pleasure. Uh, Thank you very much for that presentation, Mehran. Um, I like the quote from Benjamin Franklin a lot. Nice you added that in there. Um, so now we've got time for a couple questions. Um, so if you'd like to put those in there, we'll get straight to it. So we do have a question from James, and he says, how do you know which risks to assess in an ISO 2701? Oh, that, that's a very good question. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure that we're going to have the time. Just reach me out personally. In a very high level, you need to have a gap analysis for your information security management system and Annex A, aka statement of applicability. You will need to define which controls are applicable, which are not applicable. If something is inapplicable, why it's inapplicable? For those that are applicable, maybe you need to create some stuff and maybe you need to understand the overall, uh, overall risk. So um, that's just in an essence. And we also have some great, um, great articles and guides on our website. So you are welcome to visit there. And I'm sure it's going to assist you. Thank you for that, Mehran. Um, also, we have added the SOC2 Bible at the top there. So feel free to download your copy there. Um, so we do have another question from Jonas Stock. He says, thanks a lot. One question, how much does it cost on average to get the first ISO 2701 when using a tool like Sightail without using something like Sightail? 
Uh, th that's a great question. And I'm, I'm sorry to be a bummer, but it depends. It depends what's the size of the company, how fast you want to go, who's going to be your auditor, um, what's going to be um, your scoping of the project. Um, Jerry, very general speaking, um, including the auditor fees, including CITEL. Um, CITEL, what we do is not actually only leveraging technology, it's mainly saving your time want to save 90% of your time. So if it's going to take you 250 hours preparing for the ISO 27001, think that it's going to save you 225 hours. It can be approximately $20,000 to $22,500. So that's what we're going to save you. Um, we save uh, at least 50% of this price. This is the, the ROI that we've seen why companies should work with us, actually save 90% of the time and making the preparation for work to take weeks instead of one months, uh, allowing the employees focusing on their core business and not um, moving aside for security and compliance. Thank you. And uh, another question, what tools does this platform integrate with looking at streamlining my company compliance journey? Oh, that, uh, we have dozens of integration, dozens. Uh, the big cloud providers, um, email services, identity management platform, uh, all of the ticketing system, human resource system, recruitment system. Um, we have um, endpoint unified management databases. You can check up on our website. We have a special page it's called integration. You will be able to find it over there. And if you don't find, please send me a message because we have a very extensive uh, roadmap and we just keep implementing more and more faster. It's definitely should address all of the startup tech stack for security compliance like ISO 27001 and for SOC 2. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Mehran. That sort of brings us to the end of the webinar. I hope everyone enjoyed it and I hope you also enjoyed that as well, Mehran. Um, also, just to quickly plug, we do have a podcast coming out very soon with uh, Mehran. So he's going to be diving deeper into what we've discussed here. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and also make sure to download your copy of the SOC 2 Bible at the top there. So see everyone in the next session. And thank you again, Mehran. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. It was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Cheers. No worries. Bye. Cheers.